here. <clears throat> it was just flying over when I started to film. Yeah, so uh, I'm here doing a day's hike, uh, fishing trip on uh, on the shores of this uh, remote lake. Uh, trying to find a place to actually put the fire. It has been really windy, uh, windy day, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I have this very very special knife. So this is the one and only Tommy Pukko, a legendary <coughs> custom-made uh, living heritage type of knife. So it's a, it's a knife uh, kind of designed or, or became famous in the 18th century, mid 18th century, and. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a knife that is it's based on a design uh, that is uh, very old in this North Finnish type of uh, bukos. And uh, there was one guy who just kind of refined the design and uh, came up with this gorgeous, gorgeous design, Tommy Bukko. So we'll do a review of this. I've been now using it two days and I'm trying to find a nice place to fish and a nice place to put up some fire, so let's see. So, uh, found a nice place to do my food, gonna uh, do some sausage cheese on the bread <laughs> and mustard. Simple as that. I will actually do uh, here in this video an insert of, of just doing some feathers or something in a garden. So. It's like a hot knife on a butter. It's of all the knives that I have at the moment the, the best. It makes so different kind of feathers. So you can do uh, thick feathers. Uh, you can slice big chunks away easily. Much, much better in that regard. So there's this extreme control that I get uh, with this knife. I can just I, I just feel it like uh, on the so the, the extreme controllability is, is the amazing part because there's many knives that are uh, let's say slicey uh, and then the profile is that they cut the uh, they want to cut deep but they are not doing feathers at all and then there are knives with high or like thick convex for example that uh, they want to curl uh, or they, they really can curl the feathers a lot but then they don't do the delicate feathers maybe so easily and then if you want to bite a bit deeper then they're not going to do that so this is just this is just does everything so and the handle is to die for and so also just a little bit about the history um, so, like I said in the beginning of the video, it was kind of created in the 18th century uh, by a guy called uh, Kalle Keranen. And uh, but the but the model or the design was was much older. And this is what I've read. And uh, the area is is north north Finnish 
a place called Kainu and uh, it's, it's full of big forests and uh, it's even kind of nowadays almost a synonym for uh, in, in, in Finnish language for kind of deserted landscapes and big forests and whatnot. So the Finnish president Urho Kekkonen actually made this famous in Finland. Uh, he used only Tommy Bukos and uh, he was maybe the most beloved pre president of Finland or the most beloved. So I, I think there's no competition. So he was kind of a, I, I don't, how do you say, like people's president. So he loved to fish and to hunt and he was really an outdoors guy. And he was from this area, uh, near this area of Kainu. He gave many to the statesmen of, of various countries as a present. Uh, so many got Tommy Pukos from, from, Kek, uh, from Urho Kekkonen. And and it's also interesting that he uh, had a blacksmith there in Kainu who was from the same lineage <laughs> as the, the, or, the, the originator, the, the or, original designer of this. So there was a blacksmith of the same lineage, and he was the kind of, uh, how do you say, uh, some kind of a court, court uh, blacksmith. Yeah, but he, 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 he was a much beloved president and a fly fisherman, hunter, hiker, whatnot. Uh, I, I don't go into politics, <laughs> but as, a, as an outdoors guy, I have a much appreciation uh, to the kind of habits of, of, of Kekkonen. And there's actually, uh, I have to, have to mention here, uh, my, my late father um, got invitation actually from Kekkonen. Um, I, I have to say, I have to tell you, sorry about ra my ramblings. Um, but my, my father actually died recently, so it kind of often I do mention him in these videos and he was a uh, real outdoors lover also. I learned many things from him. But the thing is that um, it's funny, Urho Kekkonen um, had in the 70s kind of uh, parties in his, in his kind of presidential house in Finland and he invited their kind of uh, quote-unquote important people of the of the of the time <clears throat> and uh, my father uh, who was a uh, who was a composer so he composed music uh Kekkonen kind of liked his music apparently and uh, he invited my father actually there in the 70s so he went there to sauna to drink beer to to eat and uh, he he told me this story all, he, he, during his late days my father that he was on the line to, to uh, have some food from the buffet and he noticed that the Kekkonen was behind him in the line and my father was like okay hey Mr. President you come you come first and then he told and kind of slapped my father to the back and hey Mr. Com uh, uh, like uh, how, did, how, how did he say like uh, uh, honorable you honorable composer you take first the food <laughs> so he, he appreciated lots of various peoples from lots of various political uh, point of view. That, that's why he, he invited people from left to right, uh, just people who he found interesting. So he had this kind of gatherings there. So he was really kind of a big person, let's say like this. But anyway, sorry my ramblings. It's nice. So the combination of this and the Erapu Leuku is just very nice. So it's, I, I haven't really, I, I have zero critics again uh, to this knife. And for example, today I was going to do fishing. So uh, my idea was to, to fish today, uh, to do some uh, birch fishing or pike. Uh, so this was the knife. So if I would have gotten fish, I would just use this one. I've used Ukos all my life. To, uh, as a fishing knife also, so the wood can hold water. It's just, you just need to dry it out. So the Japanese kitchen knives, many very high-end kitchen knife knives uses uh, wood. So it, it really it, it doesn't only if you let it 
rot or, or you, you don't do anything about it so <laughs> yeah okay but i will actually put now the the bushcraft stove also so just going to use matches not going to do any fire steel things so for all sorts of woodwork the tommy Fuko is just absolutely amazing Turning there for carving a sausage stick, <laughs> uh, whatnot. It's just, it is really unbelievable because it's so comfortable, it's so lightweight. Sausage is closed, ready. Turn it straight here. Uh, in, uh, in food prep or something, then, then there's another, another knives. But you can do food prep with this, so it, it's all about like where the focus focus is, where the, what, what are the strengths. So beautiful, the fit and finish so this is custom made uh, by Risto Mikkonen. Met the guy in the Pukko festivals. Silver steel, the steel uses. Everything is here very nicely uh, made. Came extremely sharp, like really sharp. You see the signature of Risto Mikkonen here. Grind is awesome, this high high scandy. There's some Tommy Pukos that are higher, the scandy, but I find this is okay. Also, by the way, when I got the knife, I thought immediately. Uh, I'm going to have an economical bankruptcy <laughs> because I'm going to buy these knives more. Uh, lots of different types of pukos. There are Oriarvi pukos, there are with higher scandy, with lower scandy, uh, etc. But not like this. And I also read that there has been an uh, idea of, of um, uh, like claiming, how do you say, like a protected statue, uh, statues for this, so that you can't make this without certain uh, regulations. And I actually find that maybe to be quite a good idea, actually. Because I do like tradition, I like uh, tra tradition held uh, that cert certain aspects must be met that you can claim it to be Tommy Pukko. So, And then the sheave, I actually adore this uh, this sheath i adore this cool ornaments love the uh, the colors unique the red black uh, very nice the the retention so it snaps in very nicely not going to drop Anywhere, no problem. Just overall beautiful, beautiful design. And I'm already interested to. Uh, I'm already interested on testing other Tommy Pukkos than this. So it's going to be interesting because I actually want to have a Tommy Pukko with even higher the Scandi. So it's nice to have a variation. And I'm going to use this. This is, although it's expensive. I'm still going to use this. So this is this is a used knife for me. And price-wise, I actually don't think it's it's expensive. For this was like 210 or something like this. It's expensive, no doubt. Uh, no, no, no. I don't <laughs> deny it. But there are not a, lots of knife makers that are doing very expensive knives, and uh, they are not custom made. They are firm and even their like quality control sucks so uh, i think people who watch this channel know what i mean but and this is cheaper than many of their knives so i don't know it's it's uh, it, it's expensive but then again it's all about it's all about choices so i, I choose to buy that i bought that so i wanted to have a tommy Pukko. So, one of my absolute favorite knives 
didn't take more than five minutes <laughs> that I know that it's going to be awesome. Mm. So, thanks for watching. See you later.